Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so we're going to have a little discussion here. I guess it's one-way discussion. Maybe you guys can leave me some comments down below, though. So, in this video, we're going to look at the Pentium G6400. You guys know I've probably made uh, at least 10 videos with it. And uh, we're going to talk about CPU bottlenecking with it. Then I'm going to talk about a better alternative to it if you're going to buy a graphics card. And that will be the i3-10100F which should be out, I would imagine, between the next 30 days to 60 days, uh, assuming, you know, quantities aren't limited and all that good stuff, right? So, first video we're going to look at, this is a Pentium G6400, and, you know, a dream for some folks would be to, to be able to buy this cheap CPU and combine it with a pretty good graphics card, something like an RTX 2080 Super, uh, 3080, 3090, whatever. Um, and though while you might, you know, get some high FPS gaming wise, you're going to hit these uh, CPU bottlenecks. So in this case, if you look at the uh, top line there, GPU, here's your utilization for the graphics card. It's only cruising along, you know, at 50-60%. Now our CPU is really working, 99%. Albeit this is a game that is... Uh, CPU intensive, but this, you know, could present some performance issues, right? So, how do we try and help this out a little? Well, we'd have to go in and adjust our graphic settings. Maybe uh, go to 1080p Epic. In this video, I jump up to 1080p Competitive, which adds, you know, view distance and textures to be Epic. Now, doesn't really do a whole lot. Graphics cards actually being used even even less and at least in this this shot and we've got our CPU utilization is at 100 percent so it is tapped out and as you could probably see also the temperature of this Pentium it may have gone up as well uh, at least when you hit 100 percent if we can go back a second Yeah, when it's you know obviously less than 100%, the temperatures are a little a little less. So it's it's screaming with that Intel stock cooler. All right, so this is not a good uh, pair. So anything you know definitely greater than this is going to be even worse. Somewhere here, I believe I have Pentium G6400 with the RTX 2070 Super. But uh, if you want to see that video, uh, I'd say Google it. Well, I'll spare you. Uh, it's it's going to be worse than what you just saw there, most likely. So, what is good for the Pentium G6400? How about an RX 550, all right? So, this will load up. I if I can find the right spot. So, I was doing a lot of talking here about the uh, computer itself. Yada, yada, yada. And... Looks like we probably have too much going on. So I'm in a hotel, folks, and the internet is not what I'm used to. Oh, still loading, still talking. There we go. All right, so here you go. This is really what you want to see. You want to see that graphics card getting used, right? So it's staying close to 100%. The CPU is cruising along, okay? It's keeping a nice cool temperature there and we are getting you know optimum performance out of the graphics card so you know 1080p low only 60 fps average so far uh, it's not really exciting and if you have a 60 hertz monitor hey you know you're probably uh, you're getting about as good at a fps as, as you need for 60 hertz but will it feel smooth gameplay wise probably not uh, will it drop below that? Yes, and eventually if you looked at 1% low, let's go all the way out to the end. And that's actually, you know, not too bad for 1% low for, for this situation and this, this computer. Alright, so RX 550, it works, alright? So if you're going to get a G6400, hey, RX 550 would be good for you. Now let's look at a 550 and a 560. All right. Actually, let me pause this because, like I said, the internet's terribly slow here. Okay. So in this case, 
on the right side we have the RX 550 that you just saw this is 1080p competitive settings okay and we'll look over here graphics cards getting worked and this time the CPU is actually uh, straining a little more and when it gets down on the ground he's probably you know it'll probably be in a decent range but you know even on RX on the 1080p competitive settings this this works good jump over to the 2 gig RX 560 I also have a 560 4 gig we've got our graphics card it's close to 100 percent so it's you know jumping all around but uh, relatively high numbers we're pushing it pretty good now the CPU you do see sometimes the percentage jumps up right but it's not sustaining 70% uh, or greater and you know some people may say sustaining 80% or greater but it is for the most part uh, doing decently we're keeping the CPU temp down and I couldn't tell you which CPU cooler this is unless it's listed here yeah stock cooler so that's actually you know a, a, compared to what we saw earlier pretty good temperature so the CPU is, is doing okay now so you kind of see RX 550 RX 560 for these games it's it's not a bad matchup will there be other games out there that the Pentium G6400 and this RX 550 or 560 would work better with yeah probably uh, unfortunately you know I don't have any examples to show you guys but uh, let's look at an alternative to this okay and before we do that let's look at what we have with the Pentium let's talk some tech specs here so I bought this yeah quarter two 2020 which pretty much got it right away I was so excited most powerful Pentium out there right $64 I think that's about what I paid for it I might have got it for 60 um, have I seen it less than that? No, I have not. Now this has two cores, four threads, and you see the base frequency four gigahertz. So this is this is as fast as this thing's going to get. Okay, across these two cores. Now this says TD, TDP 68 watts. Um, you know, having watched the power usage of this thing, I don't think I've ever seen it over 30 watts. So, uh, and of course, you know, when you talk TDP, might as well click on this represents the average power in watts the processor dissipates when operating base frequency with all cores under an Intel defined high complexity workload so the fact that I never saw it over 30 it seems like the TDP should be lower than 58 I've even tried using power limits to unlock <laughs> to get it to get it even higher on a Z490 Oop. hang on a second All right, folks, so we got interrupted, and uh, we'll start all over again from this point. So, Pentium G6400 was launched quarter two of 2020. I got one right away, as I was super excited to have the world's fastest Pentium. Now, what did I get with that? Two cores, four threads, processor base frequency, four gigahertz. Now, this does not have turbo boost technology, okay? keep that in mind TDP 58 watts so that's you know supposed to be an average now odd thing is I never saw anything above 30 watts um, mainly you know 20 20 well excuse me 25 28 range I believe so what is TDP well that's the average power and watts processor dissipates when operating base frequency with all cores active under an Intel defined high complexity workload so you will get lower wattage out of this lower lower power usage this does have Intel's UHD graphics 610 which is the uh, not the good one the 630 well none of them are good but 630 is a little better you see the resolutions is capable of supports DirectX 12 and all that good stuff alright so let's go ahead and look at the now, specifically here is a no to that question. All right. 
Let's look at the i310-100. What do you get here? This came out quarter four of 2020. Excuse me. This will come out in... Let's look at the i310-100F. This will come out in quarter four 2020. So we are there. Who knows exactly when. Now here's the price. So $79. The other one was $64. This has four cores, eight threads, so the other one was two and four. Processor base frequency, the other one was four gigahertz, and this one is 3.60. But here's the kicker, folks, max turbo boost frequency, and it's across four cores. So you're going to get a lot more done. Now, 65 watt TDP. Both of these are limited to 2666 megahertz RAM unless you're in a Z490 motherboard. Let's see if there's anything else. Of course, these are all LGA 1200 motherboards. And as I said, Turbo Boost Technology 2.0 doesn't so it doesn't have 3.0, folks. Um, that's the best performing one. So I did not know that aspect, and now I'm reading it. Now I want to refund Intel. But uh, all right, so there is the CPU itself comparison. Now right there, you can tell you're getting a lot more, right? Let's see how that correlates gaming-wise. All right, so here is. 1080p low for Fortnite with the i3 10100 RX 550 and this is actually in a uh, Z490 motherboard it would appear so you see our GPU is in that range we want it to be the CPU is cruising along temperatures are good this is most likely with a stock cooler And you can see there's quite a performance increase between what the Pentium G6400 and the RX560 would do. So let's take a look at that too. Now this is the 10100, okay, but the 10100F is going to give pretty much the same performance. So right about the end of the game, 84 FPS here. Let's go back and look at this. 1080p low. 66, okay? So, huge improvement right there. Sixty-six to eighty-four, so almost that's eighteen FPS. All right. Now, if I did these both these benchmarks a couple more times, um, you know, there's there's some error there, I guess you would call it. So maybe plus minus, you know, another five FPS. All right. So that is 1080p low, better RAM. Okay, which you know would make an, a difference here on this number. Now, how about how does this do with a RTX 2070 Super, which would be a, a no-go with the Pentium. So this isn't really a good matchup either. We're not pushing our GPU. CPU is cruising along. Gaming, you know, is is uh is pretty good. That's a ridiculously high FPS there, right? By the end of it, 249. Now I don't show 108 what the FPS 1% uh, low is, but uh, I would not recommend this combination, though it is it is definitely playable. So how do we improve upon that? Push the graphics card a little harder. We adjust the settings from 1080p low to 4K competitive. Okay, so not only did we adjust the graphics resolution but we also adjusted the quality and you can see we're getting our graphics card working a lot harder which we want to see our CPU is still cruising along so 
to be honest with you, this this is actually uh, playable. And uh, if we go further ahead, we see our one percent low, and we'd like that to be, you know, a lot closer to our FPS average, but that's not always realistic, especially with this game. So later on in the game, after I die, 183 FPS. All right, so. For this, you know, this this would be a decent matchup if you're going to play this setting. Now, one last one. What is a more realistic graphics card for somebody that's going to buy an i3-10100? Let me pause this. We probably have too much stuff running in the background. Now, this is 1080p Epic, no shadows, with a RX 590 and the i3-10100 and this is actually a, a much better matchup. You see our graphics card is working hard our CPU is cruising along we've got good FPS and this this is honestly what you know most of you probably would uh, would go with uh, at least for graphics card something like this RX 580, 570 but you will uh, definitely enjoy your gaming a lot better with this CPU than you would with the Pentium G6400. Plus, you have a lot more um, upward mobility on your GPU, right? Like I said, the Pentium G6400 is pretty much tapped out at that RX 550, RX 560, where in this case, we not only can easily do a 550, we can do a 560, we can do a 570, we can do the 580, we can do a 590, 5500 XT. We could probably almost do the 5600 XT on some settings. Um, and then talking Intel, you are good for GT, well, GT 1030, GT 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, probably even a 1070. And then I haven't tried this with a uh, with the 1660, but probably good there as well. 1660 Super, I would imagine, is going to be good. After that, though, you know, it's probably questionable, right? So it depends on what the things are, whether it's going to be a good matchup. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.